The Chinese Communist Party attacking the bill that forces ByteDance to sell its share of TikTok or face a ban in the U.S. China accusing the United States of, quote, bullying and claiming that the ban will backfire on the U.S. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson out with this statement this morning. How the U.S. handles the TikTok incident enables the world to see clearly whether U.S.'s so-called rules-based order serves the world or serves itself, according to the CCP spokesperson. Joining me now is the Hudson Institute senior fellow, Atlas Organization founder and the author of The Decisive Decade, Jonathan D.T. Ward, back with us. Jonathan, good to see you. What do you make of China's response to this uh, TikTok ban bill? Well, look, they're rolling out all their sort of biggest uh, spokespeople and that sort of thing. I mean, this stuff comes directly from the foreign ministry. They say this kind of bullying behavior cannot win in fair competition, which is completely absurd. I mean, you're talking about a country that has denied real access to any of our technology companies, any of our social media companies. I mean, all of that is widely known. But this is not about winning an intellectual argument with the Communist Party. This is about stopping an adversary operation in the United States. And I think we need to go back to what TikTok actually did last week and remind ourselves of what happened. They basically turned the app that's being used by 170 million um, Americans into a tool of direct political action. What users found when they logged in was something that said, speak up now before your government strips 170 million Americans of their constitutional right to free expression. Then it had a call button where people could call their senator. So, I mean, clearly they think that they're untouchable. I mean, this is ByteDance, which is basically deeply tied to the Chinese surveillance state. Um, and they're acting, I think, with impunity here. So it was a huge win for America yesterday to pass this bill in the House. I mean, finally, yeah. finally, Maria, we're winning a battle. Battle here in this, um, you know, just obscene sort of situation that we found ourselves in, where China is, uh, I think, gaining on every front, and all we do is talk. I mean, we're finally winning something. So pushing this forward, and then I think the other side of it is um, the Communist Party, and I don't think this is that well known. Um, you know, one of their key Politburo. Bureau members, Wang Huning, who I think we should pay more attention to, wrote a book uh, early on in his life called America Against America. And he had traveled widely here, saw what he thought as the contradictions, the potential for divisions. You know, the Russians think that way about us, too. But there's an idea in um, Communist Party strategic thinking about using a country to fight a country. So this is what they want. They want us to be fighting each yeah. other. Um, and, and they're accomplishing yeah. that. So, so I would also... You know, the people that executed this, you know, the lobbyists, yeah. the marketing firms, the advertising agencies, I'd give them 30 days to cease all activity on behalf of TikTok hmm. or regard them as part of ByteDance. I mean, we have to clean this out. Well, this is all a strategy to undermine the United States, you know, uh, pushing propaganda out there to create, you know, uh, disruption and fighting amongst ourselves is, is happening and has been happening for some time uh, with propaganda on TikTok, uh, propaganda propaganda coming from the CCP. California Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy is predicting that Xi Jinping will ultimately tell ByteDance to divest from TikTok. He said, quote, Xi is also dealing with an economy that is tanking and assuring investors that he's not going to zero out their investment for political reasons, Jonathan. So what, I mean, do you think ultimately a U.S. company buys it? Well, we have to do something. I, mean, I think the bill is very clear. It's the right thing to do. Um, you know, there are people that earn their livelihoods on this. It is that sort of platform. But getting ByteDance out of the equation is what you have to do immediately. Yeah. Um, so, so we're taking steps on that. And yes, there should be buyers here. I mean, the Trump administration had already sort of lined up That's something right. similar with Oracle. Um, I think even um, one of the other big tech companies was was considering. I think it was Microsoft. Um, and you know, keep in mind, this is all coming as uh, as Beijing is trying to excise our remaining tech companies. From its own, That's right. um, you know, infrastructure. I and mean, there's a big report in the, in the journal about that on Document 79 to get rid of Dell and Microsoft and Oracle and all the rest of them. Yeah. So, you know, we have to get this done. Um, I do think there will be a buyer. I mean, even Kevin O'Leary, who, who you've had on your show, has offered to to buy this thing. I'm sure there'll be plenty of creative yeah. ideas. Um, but getting ByteDance out of the equation and then going after ByteDance. I mean, hitting them with entities list, hitting them with foreign direct product <laughs> rule. I mean, pretty much everything you can and want to do. I mean, we could get very I'm so creative. Over on 
with these lists, Jonathan, to. okay? There are so many lists of Chinese companies that have been sanctioned. They're still trading on U.S. exchanges. And that means that U.S. investors are still funding the expansion of their uh, number one adversary, which is the Chinese Communist Party. So uh, we need to see more than just slapping some lists on these companies. South Carolina Congresswoman Nancy Mace voted no on this TikTok bill, Jonathan. She said that the proposal is part of an alarming trend toward government overreach. Instead, Mace is warning about the Chinese nationals rapidly entering the country, writing this on X. While POTUS endorses a TikTok ban, his border policies are rolling out the welcome mat for unvetted Chinese nationals, many who have direct ties to the CCP. Now, I want to get your reaction to this, Jonathan, because Pennsylvania Congressman Guy Reschenthaler joined me on this program yesterday. He told me straight away, these Chinese nationals that are largely military-aged men are being directed to come here from the Chinese government. Watch this. You can't do anything in China without approval from the government, let alone leave the country. So they're coming here. I would speculate that if China invades Taiwan, they would try to have some kind of cyber attack uh, to throw us off guard, maybe have these sleeper cells attack critical infrastructure, engage, engage in espionage, maybe even lead and in, in foment civil unrest with far-left radical groups and debil debilitate our ability to react to an impending, impending invasion of Taiwan. They're here at the direction of the C uh, CCP and PLA. Military-aged Chinese men that the Chinese party have given the okay to come here, waiting to unleash chaos, probably if and when China tries to invade Taiwan. So not only are we having a threat from terrorism, there's also a threat from the CCP here as well. Well, I thought that was very well said, Jonathan. Your reaction? Well, look, I mean, you know, they have many ways of, of trying to overwhelm us. I mean, right. last week they used ByteDance to essentially attempt to overwhelm the U.S. Congress through direct political action. So in the event of a, an a, um, attack on Taiwan or on the Indian border or any of that in Asia, I mean, they're going to have a lot of options at their disposal. And that probably does include the people. I mean, why wouldn't they exploit an open southern border? I mean, they have police stations here. You know, they have all sorts of things going on, um, gate crashing U.S. military bases. I mean, I'm sure they'd like to add to their ability to create effects in the United States. Um, but we we just saw the full power of, I think, their most potent, um, you know, capability in America last week when TikTok, uh, you know, flooded the American government with incoming calls, um, you know, on behalf of ByteDance. Yeah. All right, Jonathan, we'll keep watching it. Great to talk with you, as always. Thank you so much. Jonathan D.T. Ward on the threat of Thank communist you. China. Stay with us. We'll be right back.